Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm working with Cody Miller on Aridia, The Paths We Dare Tread. And this is actually the fourth video in a series about the making of the loot tiles in Aridia. And if you haven't seen the other videos, uh, definitely go watch those first. If you're here, you are deep down the rabbit hole. This is a lot of nitty gritty details about the specific attack patterns and really the just the super low level details. So hopefully this is interesting to you. And if not, I will not be offended in the least. So what you're looking at here is the InDesign file. I'll talk about the InDesign file, I'll talk about the Excel spreadsheet, and I'll talk about the Illustrator files that actually have these damage patterns on them. So this is the InDesign file, and what you might notice in, in the top right, we have a damage patterns layer. There's a text frame, and within that text frame, there's a group of a bunch of things. So in that group, I'm going to show you layer or, or group that I've renamed to be group A. And here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you know from the previous video, those represent, those are the frames that represent the, the numbers on the keypad. So if I select, I'm going to select number nine, that's going to be in the top right. So in this particular damage pattern, there's nothing in the top right, but that's number nine. Here's eight, here's seven, here's six and looks like there might be something there. Here's five, here's four, here's three, and two, and one. So what's happening though, if you look really closely, is that this middle damage point is underneath this damage point over here. And so it feels like there's sort of a flow going from left to right. And so not only do we need the nine different points on the keypad, we also need some layers stacked on top of each other so that if we have four points of damage, we can tell the system, yeah, I want this one to be underneath this one and not vice versa. So that's why there is A, B, C, D, and I used P for piercing damage because the piercing goes underneath sort of, it's an outline, but it, but it goes sort of underneath the, the damage. And so what's happening here is we have a three by three grid that I showed you one through nine on layer A. And then we have another three by three grid underneath it. That's layer B. And then another three by three grid C, another three by three grid D and another three by three grid P. And if we want to make bigger damage patterns, we can just, add in more, as many layers as we want. Right now, this supports this supports four, four points of damage plus piercing, but we can easily add more if we need to. Okay, so that is how the InDesign file is set up. And so what we do in the Excel file is we put the position that we want it in, and now you might understand what A means. What A means is layer A. That's the top, that's the top layer in the InDesign file. Layer B is the second to top, C is next, D is next. And then P is automatically processed simply by adding P to this column. Okay, so how do we do that very specifically? Okay, so here, here's, we're really getting into the details of Excel here. I put as the designer or Cody as the designer put the, uh, you know, for this particular item, put five there. That means we want this X to start in position five. Oh, this is, sorry, I'm showing an example of uh, this item. So let's at least get that to match. Okay, so this is the item we made up in the last video. That's totally placeholder. So there's an X that starts here, right in the middle, and that is this five X. Okay, so how do we know to actually put the file there? And what ha the, the way that works is, the way InDesign data merge works, is you can assign a particular value or a particular column basically to a particular frame in InDesign. So what, what I've done in advance is for position one, layer A, I assigned it this. For position two, layer A, I assigned it this etc. all the way down A one through nine, B one through nine, C one through nine, D one through nine, and P one through nine. 
Okay, so all of those have already been pre-assigned in InDesign to, to match the proper uh, column. And then what we do is we have a formula in each of these cells to properly look up what should go there. And so what you're seeing here is this formula. This is, this is for number five, and it says, if this value over here, which happens to be AE9, is equal to five, which means the middle of the grid, and this is, this is the value that I've assigned to be the middle of the grid, if that matches, then show this file, X1, that's, that's AC9, and furthermore, if the leftmost character is an X, just end it with .ai, and if the leftmost character is not an X, then end it with start.ai. And what, what's, let me explain what's going on there. What's going on there is if we are starting a damage pattern with an X, then I simply want to use the file, the file named uh, x.ai, where is, I'll show that to you here. So here are all the possible file names and there's an x1, an x2, and an x3. I'll show you x1. So this is what x1 looks like, right? It's just an x in the center and it's white because it's one, it's the first threshold, okay? But we also have a bunch of other ones. So for instance, east, this is e1. It's east and it's white because it's the first threshold, that's the one. But we also have east one start. So because of the file naming convention, we are able to put in the Excel spreadsheet E1 or X1 because that's what the files are named. There's a match there. And so that's what this is doing. This is saying, hey, go pull, I'll make this bigger so you can actually see what it says. Go pull from the arrows folder, the file that's called X1.ai. But for this, for, for this pattern, because we're making it east and because we know if a pattern starts with a directional arrow and not an X, we want that, we want that start arrow to be on there, then add start to the end of it. And, and that's this file name. So, so the, what you're seeing here, I, I started with the middle one because that's just a little bit of a simpler formula. But what you're seeing here is check to see if this five matches this five, and then check to just copy in this file name. And, and because I have matched all of these with all of the files in all, all of the um, individual frames in InDesign, each of these individual frames in InDesign, when we do the data merge, most of the time, these are just blank. Like there are tons of blanks here. Most of the time, these things don't, don't have anything in them. But when you do have a particular pattern, then it pulls in the proper file. Okay, so hopefully you were able to follow that. I'm sorry if my explanation wasn't the best there. Um, basically, it's a combination of the file name, the in design with data merge matching those frames and those stacked layers of three by three grids. And then this lookup function that looks at the, the position and sees if it matches, this is five, so that's five, and then pulls in the proper file name. The one thing I haven't covered yet, and that I'm gonna cover in my final video, and if you make it to the end, <laughs> then that's, that's pretty amazing. But um, the one thing that I haven't covered is the centering. So getting this precisely centered in the space is surprisingly tricky for data merge. Um, so you'll notice this, I'll go back to this example again. This is a two row pattern. We're using this middle row and the bottom row. And so what we really want in the final product is for this to be centered vertically in this space. And the other thing that's happening here is that this does not look horizontally centered in the space, even though we know that four, five, and six are poor, or yeah, four, five, and six are perfectly centered. So I'll show you, this is four. That looks nicely centered. Five is right in the middle and six is right there. So these are all actually really nicely centered, but it's a trick of the eye because this image is actually has transparent stuff on the right side. 
and this this image does not have anything transparent on the left side. And so it looks imbalanced is what's happening. Even though it is technically being centered, it just looks horizontally Im imbalanced. So there are two kinds of centering that needs to happen. One is when you have a damage pattern that is two columns or two rows, it won't be properly centered because that's just, a, you know, it's not an even distribution of the space. And the second thing that can happen is if you have a, a starting arrow as opposed to a starting X, then it won't look vertically, uh, it won't look centered in the space. So I'll cover that in my final video. If you've made it this far, I commend you. And I hope this has been interesting to you. If you have questions, please leave comments in the comments of this video or on the Kickstarter page. Thanks so much.